Hi everyone, this is Fabi and in today's video we'll discuss about debugging techniques for embedded systems that don't require you to use a debugger. On PC, debugging usually doesn't involve any hardware, but when it comes to embedded, debuggers can be very expensive, with some for the MSP430 or Peak microcontrollers, for example, costing upwards of hundreds of dollars. While debuggers are absolutely useful, if you're just starting out, you can get by without one, and so let's talk about what techniques you have at your disposal. If you guys are new around here, this video is part of an educational series I am doing called Embedded Systems Explained, and the aim of this series is to teach you embedded systems concepts in a simple to understand manner and with examples so that you know where they're used in the real world. If you want to check out the other videos in this series, there's going to be a link to the playlist in the pinned comment down below. The fact that you work with the hardware directly when writing code for embedded systems does come as an advantage as you can use the hardware to better debug your code. The most common technique is to use LEDs to indicate that a certain snippet of code has just run. What you would do is either toggle the state of an LED when reaching a certain point in the code execution or turn on the LED for a few seconds. The first option is the most desirable as it requires the microcontroller to run just one instruction to achieve what you want to do, thus introducing basically no perceptible delay in the code execution. The second option requires a delay long enough so that the human eye can comfortably tell that the LED has been on. One way we can do this is through wasting CPU time, which just means that the microcontroller runs the same dummy instruction over and over again for the duration of the delay, but this is absolutely not recommended. This is not efficient, and this can also break functionality in case of some applications, because basically your microcontroller is trapped running this dummy instruction over and over again and can't handle other tasks during this time. Another more elegant way is to set up a timer which is going to generate an interrupt let's say one second later, at which point we can turn off our LED back. While this is more efficient, it still does require quite a few lines of code to be written for what it does, and so in the end I would just recommend you guys stick to toggling the state of the LED. You can of course even use multiple LEDs to indicate that you've reached different parts of your code. Before moving on, I just want you guys to hear a quick message from today's sponsor, PCBWay. Today's sponsor, PCBWay, is a leading provider of high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly services. The pricing is also extremely competitive and furthermore, if you have an idea for a new project or already have everything developed, PCBWay offers complete manufacturing services from producing PCBs, buying the necessary parts, assembling the PCBs, CNC machining, even 3D printing or injection molding, all the way to final assembly. No matter how complex your project is, PCB Way has got you covered. Click the link in the description to order your PCBs today at a very good price and with fast shipping and also to check out their new services which will allow you to create your own project from the ground up. You might ask, what happens if the PCB you're working on has no LEDs? This is not an issue as you can use an oscilloscope probe in order to look at the signal which would have gone to the LED. Now you might think that a scope is going to be even more expensive than a debugger, but that doesn't have to be the case for a basic amateur level scope. Check out these two oscilloscopes with the cheaper coming in at under 50 bucks. This one is very compact and is perfectly capable of checking if a signal has been toggled, for example. If you want something very capable that you'll be able to use even for probing fast signals, the Siglent oscilloscope is probably going to be the sweet spot for performance at a low price. I have experience with both and can recommend both, but if you want to just buy it once and have it be good for a really long time, then go buy the Siglent. Links to buy both of them are going to be in the description down below. If you're just looking to see if your code has reached a certain point, you can even use a multimeter to do this. All you have to do, just like in the case with the LED, is to toggle a pin, which means to have it go from 0 to 1. 
Obviously, having a scope enables you to debug much better, as you can even check out how long executing certain portions of your code takes. Quickly before moving on, please do like the video if you are finding it helpful, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. All of these things help me bring you more content on YouTube, so I appreciate you for doing them. Another popular option for debugging embedded systems is to use the LCD of the system to show the value of certain variables or simply to indicate that your code execution has reached a certain point. A lot of embedded systems have these LCD displays as the user interface, so using it during the development phase as a makeshift debugger is very easy. This would be the most similar technique to using printf when debugging computer applications. But talking about printf, a good question would be, why is this technique not relevant in embedded systems? All right, so given that embedded systems are independent from the PC or laptop we write code and debug from, using printf is not as straightforward as when you would write code for a computer application. You would need to have a serial communication interface running between the microcontroller and the PC you are debugging from in order for this to work. Another issue with printf is how memory intensive this C library is for how memory constrained microcontrollers usually are. If you try to include the printf library in one of your C embedded projects, you will see that it will take up between 8 to 10 kilobytes of flash. In the embedded world, there's software running all around us on all sorts of products that take up less space in memory than this C printf library. There's even microcontrollers out there that don't have this much memory available altogether. If you really want to debug this way, then it's best to just ditch the C library and just output the characters to the serial interface which is connected to your PC or any other system. This way, you can keep the memory footprint under control. The beauty of these techniques is that you can also combine them. You can use the LED method in order to indicate that you've reached a certain point in your code execution and then use the LCD to display a certain variable, which can be anything from an internal counter to the results of, let's say, an analog to digital converter. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful. In the description down below, you'll be able to find links to today's sponsor, PCBWay, and also to the MSP430 Launchpad, which is an embedded development board that can get you started into the world of embedded systems. You'll also find links to buy the scopes I talked about in this video. Stay tuned, I'll catch up with you in the next video.